This is the basketball show. What they gonna say next? Hello and welcome to the first basketball show for the 2020 WNBL season. Proudly brought to you by TCL Mobile and new on board this year we have Chemist Warehouse as well. Along with our broadcast partners KO and News Corp. I'm Joe Healy. The man alongside me needs no introduction. Shane the Hammer Heel, you pumped? I can't wait. Unbelievable really. Queensland Government to be able to make this happen. Pull it together with the WNBL and Basketball Australia. And the players had to buy in too. They took pay cuts to be able to make this happen. 14 games in 30 days. It's going to be unbelievable and I can't wait to talk about it. It's going to be so intense. Is there any one thing that you are particularly looking forward to? Well, there's a lot of things that uh, the amount of talent. I mean, Liz coming back into the fold is going to be unbelievable, of course. But uh, And to see how everybody handles so many games. We're talking about this is like two Olympic campaigns. This is like an NBA month, 14 games in 30 days. So a lot of challenges for these women. And just can't wait to see how it unfolds. Well, let's get straight into it with a couple of big names under the player spotlight, starting with the one and only Liz Cambage. She's unbelievable. And she's the one who needs no introduction. Don't worry about that. Six foot eight. And a lot of people will say, well, she dominates because she's six foot eight. It's not the case. She's six foot eight and she's skilled. She's mobile. She's got touch. She can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Uh, and she's hungry to be able to get wins and to be able to get it done. So, you know, she averaged 23 points a game in the WNBA for Dallas only a couple of years ago. Uh, the World Cup, 24 points, 10 rebounds for the Opals. She is a dominant player. There is no one that even comes close to her and uh, it'll be exciting because she's got a bit of attitude too. So we'll wait and see how she goes. Look forward to watching her play. Is there a chance that she's going to get ejected this season? There is every chance. Yep. Yeah, no, she's pretty emotional. She wears her heart in her sleeve and we love that. We do. And we can't wait to be able to uh, evaluate how she goes, but she's going to dominate. Well, she missed the WNBA season due to health reasons and COVID as well. Someone that was there was Ezzy Magbegor her rookie season, and she comes back with a championship. Ezzy is incredible. I cannot wait to watch her play. She, she really is the future of Australian basketball, that up-and-coming player, six foot four, just so mobile. And after you play at a higher level, when you go to the NBA or the WNBA and you come back and play in the WNBL, everyone's a little bit smaller, just not quite as quick because it's the highest level. So I expect her to really dominate. Averaged about six or seven points in a rookie year in a championship team, if you don't mind. So her confidence will be through the roof. Uh, she is going to be a star, and I can't wait to watch her and talk about her as well. Somebody who goes under the radar a little bit is Lauren Nicholson. What can we expect from her? Because really, she's up there with the best. She is. I mean, she's an opal for that reason, and she was great in Adelaide. Uh, was able to score a lot of points, but she's one of the best defensive players in the competition. Huge signing for the Townsville Fire, and not many people have really spoken about her, but I think her leadership, she's at a really good age, uh, about 26 years of age, uh, one of the best defenders in the competition. So I expect big things. I think she'll score a lot more in Shannon Seabomb's system. They'll play fast pace, but she's good off the dribble. She can shoot the three. Just a great all-round player that goes under the radar for me. Well, we will be keeping the spotlight on a number of the stars throughout the season, but it's time now for our TCL starting five. Hammer, Hub Life, talk to me. Well, it's going to be tough, isn't it? And, and different for these girls. I spoke about it being two Olympic campaigns. It's going to be about sleep, recovery, not a lot of training once they get started. So how much work have they done to prepare? Because you're not going to get fitter. It's about resting and, and recovering. So real adjustments for some of these women to see how they go. I have spoken to a couple of the players, particularly a couple in that early 30 age group. And to be honest, they said that they're a little daunted. They said that they've, they're, they've come to terms with the fact that this is where they're going, but they know it's all about rest and recovery. What about the review system, good or bad? IRS, can't wait. I think it's good. We, it was only a couple of years ago that one of the teams lost on the buzzer because there was no review system. So to go all the way through, lose a game that you should have won um, seems unfair. So the fact that uh, the WNBL has been able to make this happen, only for the Fox games, mind you. So does it seem unfair that it's not for every game? Well, you would, in a perfect world, you'd love it for every game. But I think it's great that they've got it for some games. All the finals are going to be on Fox, so we'll get a chance to be able to make sure those right decisions are made. And sometimes there's going to be mistakes made by the referees, so a chance to be able to go and reflect is so quick, get a chance to look at it, make sure the right uh, call's been done. We don't have any imports this season, which is one of the negatives, but one of the positives, the opportunities for the Aussie players. 
Yeah, well, and, and every team's going to be really tested because you want your stars to be able to get rest time because you're playing either the next day or two days later as well. So really being able to find some players that haven't had opportunities before to be able to contribute and those players then get confidence to be able to contribute in future games as well. We'll, we'll find some stars that we hadn't seen before that will be able to come out of the woodwork and those teams will benefit. Have you got anyone in mind at the moment that you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, Cassidy McLean for uh, the Bendigo team. Uh, she did her ACL a little while ago, so I think her coming back, opportunity for her to play some minutes, I think she'll get it done. I look forward to seeing Michaela Roof as well. It's not WNBL related, but we can't not talk about the fact that the Boomers are interviewing for a coach, more or less as we speak. What yeah. are your thoughts there? Brian Gorgian. Just give, give him the job. What do, Just what give it we, to him. What are we Just going like through the process for? Now, Brian Gorgian, uh, won a championship with him as his captain, one of the best coaches I've ever played for. Um, I think he's the right man for the job. Um, he's got the runs on the board. We haven't seen somebody dominate the NBL like he has. He's gone away to China, come back with even more experience. I think he's the perfect blend uh, for this Boomers team. What about somebody like Rob Beveridge? He doesn't currently have an NBL gig, so he could put all of his time into the Boomers. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that it's a full-time job. I, I think okay. you have to coach. It's like a player. You can't just turn it on for seven games a year in Olympic Games. I think you've got to do all the pre-work, do it and work on your craft day in, day out. I think Gorgian's great. And and I think, you know, Gleason uh, and also Vickerman. I'd love to see Vickerman get into the program as well. But the most important person for me is Luke Longley. He was out of the program, and he is the conduit between the old boomers. He's won before. He can talk to the NBA players eye to eye, or look down on some of them, but he can talk to them with experience. Hold and their respect. He, and, he, and he does. And he just speaks with so much poise. Um, he, he is the person they need to get back into the fold. The next two years, going back to women's basketball now, are so important for the Aussies, aren't they? Well, it's a, a time that we will probably never ever see again because we've got this condensed WNBL season rolling into the Olympics next year. Some will go and play in the WNBA. And then the following year, 2022, is the biggest time in women's basketball that we're going to see for a long time because we've got the World Cup here yeah, in Sydney. Yeah, goosebumps just you talking about it. Two years. How good for these girls to be able to play their best, really try and shine and, and make that Opals team because what an experience. And I was lucky enough to do it in 2000 play on your home soil for an Olympic Games, they get a chance to be able to do it for the World Cup. Amazing stuff. All right, this season we are going in-depth thanks to Chemist Warehouse. This is a basketball show exclusive and we are kicking things off with the Flames and Kings owner, Paul Smith. Well, the Flames are part of the basketball <laughs> landscape of Sydney have been for a long time and in previous forms have been part of the Kings and basketball is an, a, an incredible sport in that it appeals to ages, sexes, it's, it's really such a powerful thing, you know, and I, I'm the father of two girls and they're not basketballers but what I do know is that when they find something that is appealing to them and important to them, they become very passionate about it. And I hope that we can create that with the Flames and turn them into something that a lot of young women will connect with and to aspire to become something that they didn't think was possible. Well, ultimately what I want to do is ensure that we have a program within the Sydney Flames that is capable of attracting and developing the talent that can be part of that longer term runway of what the Opals basketball is about. But I stand by the premise that any sport, particularly for women, if you don't have heroes, it, the sport won't grow. Um, and so we've got to work towards that. Women's sport is growing and it's growing for multiple reasons. Number one, that there's demand for it. Certainly the arrival of innovations like uh, NRLW and AFLW has only brought to the table the fact that there is a major opportunity at a commercial level with women's sport as well. I believe that we can create a greater product uh, for our fans of basketball in Sydney, a better match day experience, a greater match day experience where men's and women's basketball ultimately when we return to a normal format of competition we'll see them played together and we'll be able to profile both men's and women's basketball in the one instance at games. 
but that's not the primary motive of what we're doing here. What we wanted to do is to create a gender balanced, inclusive view of how we could support the game of basketball as a whole and be part of the equation that works towards the Women's World Cup in 2022. And you know, we're pleased that the initial response and reaction to what we're doing with the Flames has been very, very well received and as evidenced by the commitment from Bryden's lawyers to become not only major partner of the Flames, but major partner of the Kings. So the traffic can move both ways in this equation. But at the, ultimately, at the end of the day, anything that can bring an awareness and an increase in participation and an increase in focus on women's basketball in Sydney and in New South Wales and in Australia is going to be a good thing and we want to be part of it. Well, how good was that? And thanks to Paul Smith and the Flames for being able to put that together. But the thing I'm most impressed about is the Sydney Kings, they've come in, we've said, okay, we're going to take a women's program after the Perth Wildcats. They had the links for a couple of years. They had it. They didn't, they couldn't make it work. And they're one of the glamour teams and big crowds and run their organisation and everything else. Couldn't make it work. But the Kings have said, and Paul said, we're going to do this. And not only that, they've been able to get their major sponsor for the Kings from their women's program. So great foresight. And uh, I think the Flames have got a great future. Let's hope so. Can't wait to see them in action this season. Hammer, it's time for Hammer's Hunch. Your predictions for the season, where the teams are going to finish. Let's start from the bottom. Well, see, I don't like this because right away I have to go with the Bendigo spirit. And I'm sorry, Trace, because she's a good coach, Tracy York, but uh, they've got a couple of superstars. Tess Levy has been a star for a long time in this league, the uh, Aussie uh, Opal. And uh, so, but there's going to be a lot on her shoulders to be able to get it done. Carly Ernst, probably the best three point shooter in the entire competition for big players, fours and fives. So uh, they're going to have to get it done. Looking forward to seeing Alicia Froling. She was great for three years at college, had an injury in her last year, uh, missed last year with the same injury with her wrist, but you know she's got uh, three other siblings with Keely and Harry uh, and Sam all uh, playing professionally as well. So she's going to be a star, and I spoke about Cassidy McLean as well, but it's going to be a tough year for them. Number seven? Perth Lynx. And I had them up there in the top four if Sammy Whitcomb was playing. My favourite player yeah. in the WNBL, step back Sammy. She's got the best step back you will see in women's basketball. Unbelievable three-point shooter plays in the WNBA. She won't be there. Congratulations to her and her partner having a bub shortly. Uh, that leaves a lot on uh, Katie Ebsery. And she was a star last year. We know that uh, with the Opals as well. Not a lot of other known quantities that can step up, put points on the board. Darcy Garbin coming from the Townsville Fire, but uh, light up forward. Uh, she, she can score and she's got great touch from outside as well. Question marks about the defence, uh, but I think it's going to be a tough year for Perth without Sammy. And five and six. I'm going to go for the Sydney Flames. They're in number six. Um, I think Alison Swagmire, she averaged about 15 points a game last year off the bench for Perth. I think she'll be a top five scorer in the competition. She's looking fit this year. She's going to have to put So why have you got them the down in sixth? Because I'm not sure about all of their recruiting. Okay. Um, Lauren Scherf, she's going to have to step up. She's played seven years. Great talent, uh, but she's really going to have to put some numbers up. Uh, like Lauren Mansfield, she can score as well. And Funda, I'm not even going to wreck with a wreck her last name. I'm not going to pronounce it, but I've seen her play. She's played with my eldest daughter in under 14. She's a talent. Great to see her back in the WNBL, but just not sure they're going to have enough to be able to make the top four. And what about the Adelaide Lightning? There is a big gaping hole where Alana Smith should be. And Alana Smith, uh, just like Sammy, was so excited to yeah. see her play coming off her WNBA season as well. Just a, a talent for the size that she's got. Another Opal uh, with the Opal's future in her hands as well. So that's going to be tough to be able to um, fill. Steph Talbot. Uh, great player. We know she's played in the WNBA. Another Opal, Chelsea Brook, up and coming big that can get it done. Looking forward to seeing Marina Whittle too, somebody who can score. She's played with Bendigo and with Perth last year, but um, they can make the top four. Mm. They play hard. Uh, they're well coached. They're going to be tough, but I'm not sure they'll make I it. I feel like the advantage there is I spoke to Steph during the week. They obviously haven't had to be in quarantine. They have been training really, really hard. If they can get off to a good start where some of these other teams have been in that quarantine bubble, that might work in their favour. It, it might, and they've got some experience. 
So uh, they'll certainly make a run for that top four. And who knows when you're playing so many games and who gets rested and all the rest of it. So it'll be tough. All right. Well, Courtside is back with us at the basketball show this season. So too is Derek Rucker. And we also have two-time WNBL champion Renee Garlop with us as well. We are pumped that you guys are joining the show. Renee, what do you got for us? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Really grateful to be able to talk all things WNBL on the show with you. So how good is this? Eight teams... 14 games each, and they're going to get it done in around 30 days, all live on TV. Australian women's basketball is going to be showcased like never before, and everybody's going to get to see how great our female basketball players are. I think what excites me the most heading into this season is we're going to get to see the depth of Australian talent as well as the cream of the crop. Traditionally, you'd see each team have two imports and probably six players would play the bulk of the minutes, where this year no imports, and with such a tough playing load, we're going to get to see so many more players have more of an opportunity. And while we may know how great they are, the average fan may not have had an opportunity to appreciate that just yet. Also curious to see how clubs have gone into structuring their signings from 5 to 10. While there's some massive names on board, the limelight may have to be shared with, with players that would typically be role players. This is also going to be an entertaining challenge to watch coaches manage playing loads, minutes, and see how they rotate their rosters in an effort to peak at the right time, as well as win enough games to make finals. I don't think you can go past the Flyers to be the clear favourites starting out, having four Olympians and another four players who have been a part of Opal squads. In saying that, it could be a case of survival of the fittest, which team uses their roster the best, which team can stay healthiest, may come out on top. It's going to be an absolute cracker, and I can't wait. Well, great to hear from Renee, superstar player, being able to hear, hear her opinion. And I think the point she made most of all was about depth and, and opportunity for players that we haven't seen, and we've spoken about that as well. No, exactly right. Uh, let's get to D-Ruck now. What have you got? Thank you, Joe and Shane, and let's get right into it. My rundown of the top seeds going into this WNBL sprint season. I've got the Southside Flyers on top. Any team that has Liz Kamich is always a chance to win a championship. They've got oh, hey, they've got Cole. They've got plenty of pieces to play with Liz, and Liz is one of the most dominant players in the competition. I'd be shocked if they don't make an appearance in the grand final. Behind them, I have the Melbourne Boomers. Great depth. They bring most of their players back this season. They've got some real stars as well. After that, the Canberra Capitals come in at number three. The Capitals are going to be hurt, though, because they lost their imports, and they won't be able to bring them in, obviously, with the new rules. So their Australians will need to step up, but I'm not sure that they will be able to do that in this short season. After that, I've got a mixed bag of Adelaide, Townsville, Perth. Perth, obviously, not having Sammy Whitcomb was a major loss for them, and I think they'll struggle to finish in the top four this season. Then you got Sydney and Bendigo. Sydney, Sydney aren't as deep as the other teams. They'll need to stay healthy to be able to even stay above 500. And Bendigo, they'll need time, and uh, unfortunately, this season isn't going to allow Tracy York to do what she's great at, and that's bring teams along over the course of the season. So there you have it. My prediction in the grand final, it's Southside versus Melbourne. Cambridge MVP, Southside champs. I'll talk to you guys next week. Well, great to have Derek Rucker back on board with the basketball show this year from Derek Rucker Basketball. So he sees all the best, both boys and girls, coming through. So got a great uh, opinion about the game. Look forward to seeing him each week. Yeah, great to have Derek and Renee both with us this season. It is time now for another Chemist Warehouse exclusive in-depth clip. She is a three-time WNBL champion. She's been out of the league for two years to finish her studies and have a family, but we cannot wait to see Mia Murray back out there with the fire this season. I never retired, I guess. It was, um, we'd won our third championship and after that season, I took a little bit of a moment to reflect on what I'd done, what um, you know I'd had installed in the future and um, at that time it was you know, weighing up lots of pros, lots of cons and um, my husband and I sort of decided it was time we wanted to start a family. It took a couple of years off and um, I guess I, I got stuck into the real world a little bit. I completed my university degree after nine long years and got stuck into teaching uh, as a relief teacher around Townsville. 
never went completely away from, from the club. Yeah, once the opportunity came knocking again, you know, having Sid uh, and the fire asked me to come back, I you know, couldn't wait. Knowing, um, you know, post-birth, the type of shape you're in, um, you know, the realities of that, um, and overcoming that to start with, um, but I knew it was achievable, you know, I'd played at a high level for a long time, so I knew what was involved in getting in your best shape um, for the WNBL. The club have, have supported me um, from day dot, I guess, when um, Shannon spoke to me on the phone and um, I spoke with the club. Um, they were recruiting me as a mother, so um, they knew exactly what was involved. The girls really love him, so uh, the first couple of weeks of pre-season he'd come along um, until my husband Max would pick him up. I think we've got a really exciting team. Um, I'm really happy with the way it's all um, unfolded. The girls are really hungry um, from the get-go. Uh, we've been you know, training really hard. I'm really excited by what I've seen so far. Um, it's been really fun to be a part of. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to get started. Well, thanks to the Townsville Fire for being able to put that together for us. And how good to be able to see that. She goes away, becomes a mum, comes back, plays professional sport, and uh, the Fire, with their culture, embrace that. And uh, it's going to be exciting to watch her play. It certainly is, uh, and there are quite a few mums in the league as well. It's so good to see them back playing at their best and being supported by the clubs, which they should be, mind you. Um, but, yeah, really, really good. Mia is a veteran of the game now um, and is going to bring a lot to what is quite a young team this season. Shane, it's time for another Hammers Hunch. We've got the top four teams. We'll start with the fourth. Get your notes ready. Who you got? Drum roll. Drum roll. I'm going to go with the Melbourne Boomers. They probably have that's the second. Surprising. That's They've got the second most talented team in the competition. Um, Ezzy McBeggar, we've spoken about her. She's a superstar, no doubt about that. Uh, Kayla George as well. So they make up one of the best front courts in the competition. Question marks for me. Maddie Garrick had an injury. She had surgery three months ago, and she's a great player. We've seen her put points on the board. Tess Madgen, how she goes from a day-to-day, -day, another superstar, back playing the point guard spot, um, just backing up. 14 games in 30 days. And Guy Malloy, can he adjust? Very stringent in the way he runs his offences. It's more people have to fit into his system. And I, I look at it like Trevor Gleeson was exactly the same. He got Bryce Cotton. He changed his system and adjusted it to have his best player do it. Can Guy Malloy do that and finally win a championship? Because he couldn't do it uh, with, Liz, with Liz Cambage. I'm not sure he can beat Cambage. Fair enough. Who finishes third? People are going to say I'm biased because I'm going for the Townsville Fire. And uh, I just think the youngest team in the league have a chance to surprise on the upside because of Shannon Seabon. Mm -hmm. He's the best coach in the competition in my mind. He's going to play a very different style than the rest of the teams. Um, and, and I've spoken about Lauren Nicholson. I think she's so underrated all the way across the board about what she can do. So I think she'll lead that team really well. Um, I think Shiloh's going to surprise people about contributing as far as getting people into the game. It'll be a breakout uh, year for her at the point guard spot. But Nadine Payne's going to get so many open threes. Uh, Mia Murray we've spoken about. And watch out for Courtney Woods too. Coming out of college, she's a flamethrower. She will make so many threes coming off the bench. So maybe that youth over that 30 days, they'll have a chance to be able to make the top four. One thing that I can see from there, watching them on social media and that kind of thing, it seems like the group really gets along. Would that be correct? They are very, very close. They have a lot of fun, got a really good balance with all of that as well. So they'll have some ups and downs because they are so young, no doubt about that. And coming from last is not easy. Most people are selecting them to probably finish around sixth, but I think they'll surprise a bit. And finally, who plays off in the grand final, remembering it's one match? Who wins and who loses? Canberra Capitals, I've got number two. I think they get the silver. They've won back to back the last couple of years. And when you talk about Kelsey Griffin and Mariana Tolo, two superstars in the front court, um, they've, it's no fluke they've won the last couple of years because they are stars. How do they back up with a bit of an ageing roster is going to be something that will be important to see. Uh, I think Maddie Rochi is somebody that will surprise the whole league this year. She was good last year and solid. She's always been a great defender. I think her offence will go to another level this year, really fit after playing in Queensland. Um, I'm not sure they've got a lot of depth in the guard and the perimeter spots. Um, their two best players were their imports in the backcourt last year. So a few question marks. Uh, and then obviously we've got Froling as well. Keely Froling, uh, she'll go to another level. And so then your winners are? Well, if this was a best of three 
grand final series, I would say let's just give Southside the championship now. They're the most talented team. When you start with Liz, who is the most dominant player in Australia, yeah. but one of the most dominant players in the world for her size and, and uh, ability and athleticism. But if you're going to put anyone next to her, you're going to put Leilani Mitchell because she's a veteran. She's not going to try and take over. She knows that Liz has to be fed first. So she just takes her time. She's got poise. She'll go bang, 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 hit three threes and then just play within herself. And then when you start looking at the talent, Jenna O'Hay, another Opal with the experience and just a solid all-round veteran player. Beck Cole, who plays differently and fast and transition, will complement them. Sarah Blitzarves, with her size and athleticism in the position, so hard to stop. And and Steph Blitzars, who was Cummings, come, has come back. She's a champion as well. They've just got so much depth. I just can't see. They might lose a game along the way if they rest players or whatever, but I can't see anyone beating them. They will be the hunted, that is for sure. Hammer, that concludes our first episode for the 2020 WNBL Basketball Show. It's been a lot of fun. Can't wait for next week already. Thank you to TCL Mobile and Chemist Warehouse. We love having you guys on this season. We love having you guys watching. We'll see you next week.